Hello, kids. Welcome to Kids Connection. My name is Audrey Zorik, Director of Kids Connection here at Vallejo Drive Church, a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God through different activities, Bible stories, and songs every Sabbath. If you this is your first time, we want to welcome you and invite you to come back each and every Sabbath for a new Kids Connection program where we have fun together. And if you are a regular, welcome back, kids. Always good to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us. As a hot week that this has been in smog and smoke outside from all the fires that are going on, I am happy that we are here worshiping inside. We're safe. I hope that everyone is safe. Mom and dad are safe. And I've been praying for you guys and I've been praying for your safety and for everyone's safety, especially of our firefighters. They're out in the mountains fighting those fires. Camp Cedar Falls, where we went camping last year, is, is the fire got really, really close to Camp Cedar Falls. And we almost, almost had, um, I mean, everyone evacuated, but they almost, Camp Cedar Falls almost caught on fire. Uh, we were praying all week for Camp Cedar Falls, and I'm glad and I'm happy that God helped uh, keep the fires away from Camp Cedar Falls. As a matter of fact, Camp Cedar Falls is is being lodged. It's been a lodge for um, for all the firefighters that are fighting the fire out there. They're taking a rest. They're coming to rest, to sleep, to eat at Camp Cedar Falls, and that's also uh, one of the great things that our camp is doing during the season of fire. So let's remember to pray for our firefighters as they continue to fight the fires out there. It's temperatures are, are extremely hot. All the smog, all the smoke. Let's pray for the animals, for the safety of people, uh, for the people that lost their homes. So let's remember them in our prayers. But I want to thank everyone for being a faithful Kids Connection part of a Kids Connection program. If it wasn't for you guys watching our program every week, we wouldn't be doing this. So I'm happy that you are enjoying this. Tell your friends about it. Go to graceandcondition.com forward slash Kids Connection. Let them know about this program and what, how much fun we have together. And hopefully more kids get to participate and to watch this program too. Now, I'm going to invite you guys to sing our song of the day together, which is a whole lot of change. Because just like now, there's a whole lot of change. Everything is different. And we're going to be singing this song together. And I'll explain why we're singing the song later. So call mom and dad, your siblings, or by yourself, whoever's watching with you. Let's sing this song together. A whole lot of change.
That was a fun song. I loved it. And I hope that you guys enjoy it too. Always come back to sing our song of the day during the week where you get to have some fun singing the song again and listening to the program one more time. Just don't forget to check our website down below where we have the song of the week, the song of the day. We have some activities, pages for you guys to bring up to participate. Now I'm going to invite you guys to bow your heads so we can talk to Jesus. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for all the blessings that you've given us each and every day. I want to thank you for all the boys and girls who are watching this program at home. Be with them now as we worship and help us to get connected with you and learn about your love and what happened in the story in the Bibles, in the Bible. So be with us as we worship your name today in Kids Connection. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, this is going to be, we're going to have some fun today. We're going to learn some different things throughout our program today. So stick around, don't go anywhere. But before, before we get to that, we're going to go into our mission story now. And our mission story is talking about this man who is not a pastor, but he does a lot of work that the pastors are doing. He is an administrative assistant. Let's see how God is using him to reach others. Watch our mission story for today. The West Central Africa Division sends missionaries to the front lines of mission in both the cities and remote, hard to reach areas. But mission also happens in Pierre's office at the division headquarters. Pierre is the administrative assistant to the president of the West Central Africa Division. Part of his job is to work behind the scenes, making sure missionaries are placed where they are needed most. And while his efforts usually go unnoticed, Pierre doesn't mind and finds joy in being part of God's work. To me, I think uh, all those who work in uh, the vineyard of the Lord work in various capacities. Some do some work that uh, people can see, but others also work behind uh, the curtains. Even if you're not on the front line for people to see, I think that is not the most important, but even in your very small corner, you can contribute to the progress of the Lord. Pierre wakes up early at 4.30 so he can beat the morning rush and get to his office. He answers emails, sorts out itineraries, and applies for visas for missionaries, among other things. I don't see it as uh, an ordinary office work. I work in the church of the Lord. Working in the church is a blessing because we are called to work, to be co-workers with the Lord in the salvation of people. And as Pierre goes about his work, he comes in contact with people who need counsel. As a church elder, Pierre prays for the different people who come to his office. Sometimes he gives a word of encouragement to the missionaries who come before they head out to the mission field. Nothing could have been really possible without the people who are working behind the scene. And some of us as leaders, we are just here to represent them. And we are the public person, but those who are working behind the scene in our division are serious workers for the cause of the Lord in our territory. So we are grateful for their life. We are grateful for their talent. We are also grateful for whatever they are doing. And we work as a team. Please pray for Pierre and the team in the West Central Africa Division. Pray that the Adventist Church continues to grow there and that many are reached for the kingdom. Thank you for supporting Mission. That is so cool how God is using him to preach the gospel and to tell others about Jesus and his work. Now, let me share something with you guys. 
In addition to being a part of Kids Connection and participate here with you guys, with you kids every week. And when we were here at church, we were participating and having fun together inside the Kids Connection zone. I also have a job here at church, which is administrative assistant. I do the same thing that he is doing in addition to all the office work. So I know exactly what he's talking about and what they're talking about because I too reach out to people, people reach out to me when they need help, and this is what I do here at Vallejo Drive Church during the week. This is my job, and I also have fun coming here to Kids Connection and being a part of the program with you guys. So let's remember all the missionaries out there who are administrative assistant, and may God continue to bless them in the work they do, and I know all the work they do, so they can continue to share the love of God with other people. Thank you so much for your offerings and for your prayers. Now, we're going to go into our program for today. Today's program, we're going to be talking about changes. Changes? What about changes? Well, we sang our song of the day, right? There's a whole lot of change coming your way. That was the song of the day. And this is why we're, we sang that song. And it's because our theme of today. In our story today, we're going to be learning something about changes. But before we get to that, and I explain what that's going to be, let me ask you guys something. Do you know what a custom is? A custom is when you are used to do something. For example, a tradition, right? Tradition is when you have, when you are used to do something on a certain way. Let's use some uh, examples. What is your Christmas tradition? Do you open presents? Do you open presents the night before Christmas or do you want the open presents on Christmas Day? What is your tradition? What are you accustomed to? Another tradition or another custom is how about birthdays? What do you do for your birthday parties? Do you guys eat together? Do you go out to a restaurant or do you have a party? Do you have balloons? Those are things that you are accustomed to. How about New Year? Do you guys go traveling on New Year's? How about summer vacation? Do you have a place that you go on your summer vacation with your family? Those are things that you are accustomed to. They are tradition, right? Let me share some of the things that I find interesting. Did you guys know that here in the United States, we have several different ways that people say hello? They say hello by shaking hands. They say hello by hugging people. They say hello by waving. And they say hello by fist bump, right? Those are different ways and it depends on who you are saying hello to is how you, which one you're going to use. If it's someone you know, you say hello by giving them a hug. If it's someone that you're not too sure, you give them fist bump. Nowadays, you're just saying hello, waving hello from a distance because we're all protecting ourselves. But there are different ways that people are saying hello. This is what we are accustomed to. Did you guys know that in some places, in other countries, when people greet each other, they kiss each other on the cheek. Not only one kiss, but they give two kisses and sometimes even three kisses. Like in Europe, in France, in Brazil, people kiss each other when they say hello. Oh, this is my friend. Oh, hello. You just approach and you touch your cheek and you kiss one, two, and three depending on who that person is. That is how they are accustomed to in that country. Did you also know that, let me see if you guessed this one. Which country do you think that people don't use forks to eat? They eat with chopsticks. Which one? Some Asian countries, right? Um, we have Japan, we have China. There are other Asian countries that people use chopsticks to eat. They don't use fork. They don't use fork. And did you know that if you use the chopstick to stab the food and to rip the food apart using the chopstick, it is disrespectful in Japan? 
In other countries, for example, people eat with their hands. Like in India. In India, people, they all sit. They don't sit on the table. Well, some places, they don't sit on the table. They sit around on the floor and they have a big bowl of rice. And people just grab rice with their hand from all from the same plate. And they eat all together with, with uh, bread. And they're eating all that together. That's how they're accustomed to. Pizza. We eat pizza with our hands, right? We go to the pizza place or we order pizza from home. Did you guys know that in Brazil, you don't eat pizza with your hands? You eat it with a plate, knife, fork, napkins on your lap, and you cut the pieces of pizza and you eat it with your fork. Try going to a Brazilian pizzeria one day and they're going to actually give you a plate with a knife and forks for you to eat with knife and forks. That's funny. If you need to know, I know a Brazilian pizzeria, so I can tell you that. How about other places where you don't shake hands, where you don't wave, where you don't hug, where you don't, where you don't kiss? What do you do in uh, some countries? Let me see if you know. You get in front of the person and you go. You bow. You don't bow with your head. It's not like this. No. You bow with the whole, your body. You put your hands, you put your hands on your, on your, on your legs and, and you bow the, the entire body from your waist up and you bow everything showing respect to the other person. That's how you say hello in countries like, like Japan, for example. Now, who uses piñata for birthdays? Yes, it's a Mexican tradition. They are accustomed to that. So when they have a birthday party, they fill the piñata with candies and they have a stick and they hit the piñata until they break the piñata and all the kids run and get all the candies. That is a tradition for Mexicans. And we use it here too because some of those traditions are fun and we hear, we do it together here, right? Um, other countries, when you walk in someone's house, you take your shoes off. You take your shoes, you don't walk in someone's house with your shoes. As a matter of fact, you don't walk inside of any house with your shoes on. And when you go to church, everyone leave their, their shoes outside and they all walk in the church barefoot. Imagine a church our size where we have about five and six hundred people in church walking out of the end of the service in their 600 shoe pair of shoes which one is mine what if they're two pair of shoes that are look they look alike and which one is mine uh, do i take the new one do i take the old one what if you take the wrong size imagine that but that's their that's their tradition that's what they used to do in other countries when you walk in the church the men sit in one side of the church and women sit on the other side. The Muslims, for example, that's a religion. They are accustomed to do that. Uh, something very interesting, and I'm going to close with this. As I was learning some things from different countries and what people do, I learned that in Qatar, okay, there, there is a country named Qatar. Guess what they do? The men, when they come to greet each other, they kiss each other on the cheek. Now, there's one kiss, two kisses, or three kisses. And this all depends if you know the person. If you know them, you touch your cheek. Uh, if you don't know them, you touch your cheek once. Like, hello, nice to meet you, and you touch the cheek. If you know them somewhat, and you know them from before, then you touch them twice. You go and you touch once, twice. They hold each other on, on their shoulders and they touch their cheek once and twice. Now, if you really know that person and they're your friend, you come and you touch their cheek once, twice, three times, and sometimes even more than three times they touch that. Now, and if they're very close friends, sometimes they don't touch cheeks. They grab each other on their shoulders and the men come and they touch their noses. They rub their noses one on the other. Imagine how funny would that be? 
what we think is funny, but for them, they are they are accustomed to that. They are used to that. It is tradition for them to do that. Now, if they um, if they come to an elderly person, they kiss that elderly person on the forehead because that is showing respect for the elderly. How about you? What are the things that you are accustomed to? Do you wake up in the morning and you go straight and have breakfast? Are you accustomed to that? Or do you wake up and you pray? Do you pray before your meal? Do you pray three times a day? Do you take off your shoes before you walk in the house? What are some of the things that you guys have as tradition do you know you're not sure you don't remember how about if you ask mom and dad ask them what are some of the traditions some of the things that you are your family is accustomed to and start start thinking about those things because that is what identifies who you are because when I tell you when I told you all these different things that are happening in different parts of the world that is what identify those people so when you see someone when you see two men touching their noses one two three times you know that they're from Qatar there are other countries that do that too they, they also do it but right now I'm just sharing the Qatar country because that's what I learned today what are the things that you do that identify you and your family what are you accustomed to today in our story we're going to learn about someone who went somewhere and she met a different family and that family had different traditions had different things that they did and she had to learn those things and I'm talking about Ruth Ruth went and had a new family and what are the things that she needed to learn and when I talk about removing your shoes and your sandals before you walk in the house you will hear in your story today an explanation about shoes and sandals right in the memory verse that your teacher is going to talk about so let's pay attention to our story that will talk about how Ruth went to a new family and had to learn and she experienced some changes in her life with the new family but before we get to that let's go ahead and sing our song of the day together one more time there's a whole lot of change coming your way
does like it or not, nothing stays the same. Pray with me. Dear Jesus, thank you so much because even though we are experiencing a lot of changes, you are with us. You are protecting us and you promise that you'll be with us until you come again. Help us to always remember that and always trust that you will be with us despite everything that is happening. Be with all the boys and girls as we learn the story about Ruth today and her new family. Be with all the firefighters, all the first responders, the doctors, the nurses. Protect them, keep them safe. And Jesus, thank you because you love us and you are in heaven preparing a place for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you for being a part of another Kids Connection program. I love having you guys here. Don't forget, and this is something that it's new, or not new, but I want to introduce you guys to this. Today, do you guys remember last month we had Johnny came out to the Zoom meeting? Remember? Okay, well, Johnny is not coming to the Zoom meeting, but today we are having a live worship service. The pastors are going to be on the worship service and their Pastor James has prepared a special message for us today. And here's something fun that you're going to see. It's been a while since we don't see that because we don't get to go to church. But today in the Zoom, we are going to witness a baptism. Yes, someone is getting baptized here at Vallejo Drive Church. And you guys will get to see that. Ask mom and dad to go to graceunconditional.com at 11 o'clock today. Maybe they can join in a little earlier and go to our live Zoom worship today. We're going to get a chance to see each other on Zoom and hear a live message from Pastor James and watch a live baptism happening here at the Leho Drive Church. Now, um, Sundays we have the Kid to Kid uh, where we all the kids join the Zoom meeting and we play some games. Well, we're going to be stopping the kid to kid zoom on sundays for now so we're not going to have kid to kid on sundays until we announce that again so sundays spend time with your family have fun with mom and dad do a different activity maybe something that you can do this week is learn different traditions from other countries and see what traditions you have as a family that's something fun that you can do now uh, we also have a couple of teachers that are joining us. And the teachers are going to be for juniors classroom and for the early teens classroom. Just a heads up, we're going to have the juniors and the early teens classroom coming up very, very soon. So be on the lookout for that. I'll let you guys know when those lessons and those teachers are available to do their lesson here at Kids Connection. I want to finalize with a special thing. I want to wish Vashti and Ariane a happy birthday. It was their birthday last week, and Dad contacted me and told me that they had a birthday. So I want to wish Vashti and Ariane a very, very happy birthday. May God bless you. May God keep you safe. And uh, uh, Vashti turned seven, and Ariane turned five. Happy birthday to the two of you. And if you have a birthday coming up or you just had a birthday, send me a note. Ask mom or dad to let me know so we too can wish you a happy birthday right here in Kids Connection. Kids, it was good having you here. Thank you so much for being a part, for participating. Come back next week for another Kids Connection program. Until then, may God keep you safe and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye, kids. I love you. Bye-bye. Sabbath to you. Are you ready to sing our good morning song? It goes like this. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. How are you today? Good morning to you. Good morning to you. This happy Sabbath day. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. How are you today? Good morning to you. Good morning to you. 
happy Sabbath day. I hope you all had a good week this week. I'd like to welcome you to Sabbath School today. I'd like to welcome Sky and Paul, Ethan and Alice, Sunny, Rio and Gia, Amy and Camden, Reese, Sammy, happy birthday, Sammy, Carlina and Tyel, happy birthday, Tyel. I'd like to welcome Aiden, Vida and Max, Caitlin, Ariane and Vashti, Ariane and Vashti, happy birthday. I'd like to welcome Moses and Estella, Jax, Janie and Jade. I'd like to welcome Josiah and Nicholas, Federico and Francisco, Will and Mia. I'd like to welcome Andrea, happy birthday, Andrea. I'd like to welcome Joshua, Joy and Jael, Luke and John, Cody, Benjamin, Aaliyah and Ethan, JR and Seth, Zori and Baby. I hope you have a good Sabbath school today. Let's talk some more about Ruth. Well, before we start to talk about Ruth, I wanna ask you a question. Do you know what the word custom means? A custom is something that people do over and over again. It starts to become a tradition or a custom. Each society or place has its own customs. We might come up to somebody and shake hands with them, and that's a custom in some parts of the world. In other places, there are other kinds of customs. In the country of Norway, manners are very important, table manners especially. Most of the meals, including sandwiches and pizza, they use a knife and a fork. Now we don't do that here, but if you travel to Norway, be sure you always use your knife and fork. In the country of England, there's a tradition called gurning. It's over 750 years old. Now gurning is making a really funny, weird face. See if you can make a really funny, weird face for me, okay? I don't know, shall I make one? <laughs> Make a funny, weird face. People take it so seriously that there are even world gurning contests. One person got all of his teeth pulled out so he could make an even weirder face. That's pretty dedicated. Well, in the country of Thailand in November, there is a town where they pile up big mounds of fruits and vegetables and candy on tables along the edge of the street. And then they let the monkeys that live there go through the town and eat and eat and eat. Do you think the monkeys really like that? I bet they probably have a great time. Some of those customs seem a little strange to us, don't they? But if you've always done those things, then they're familiar to you. Do you have any special things that you do in your family? I want you to listen to today's story because in our story, there is a custom that involves a shoe. Let's find out about it. Well, Ruth, remember, worked in Boaz's field and he grew to respect her a lot. Now he knew that Ruth and Naomi needed some help from him. And he knew that he was a relative of Naomi's dead husband. So he talked to Ruth and Naomi about being their redeemer. A redeemer means somebody who pays a price to help you out. Now, Boaz was Ruth and Naomi's kinsman redeemer, but they had more than one kinsman redeemer. There was another man who was a closer relative to Elimelech. And Boaz went to the city gate. Now they did their business at the city gate there. That was the custom. And he said to the man, are you willing to buy Elimelech's land and redeem it for our family? And the man said, oh sure, I'll do that. But then Boaz said, that means that you have to marry Ruth and carry on the family through her. And the man said, no, I can't do that. You can do it. Now this is where the custom comes in. When they made an agreement at the city gates, 
There were all kinds of witnesses there to say that it really did happen. And when they made an agreement, they had to take off their sandal and give it to the other person. And that signified that they agreed to that portion of the agreement. Wow, can you imagine that, taking off your shoe and giving it to somebody when you have an agreement with them? Well, Boaz and Ruth's story sounds like a nice love story, doesn't it? By marrying Ruth and buying back Elimelech's land, he saved their family. Now, Boaz, besides buying back the land, he had all kinds of other things too. He was already a rich man. He had sheep and cattle, and he had a home for them to go to. So he saved their life. They wouldn't have to go out and beg for food. They would live with Boaz, and he would take care of them. Well, that was a wonderful story. Why do you think God put that story into the Bible? Let's find out. God, I think, put that story into the Bible to show us that there was such a thing as a redeemer. Since Boaz married Ruth, and then they had a little baby. He redeemed the family. And that means he saved the family. She had a little baby. And then the Bible says that Naomi, the baby's grandmother, took care of the baby like it was her own son. What would have happened to Naomi and Ruth if Boaz had not redeemed them? Well, they would have had to go out and beg for their food and they would probably have starved. They didn't know that God was going to save them. They knew that God had a plan, but they didn't know what it was. Well, Ruth loved and trusted God because Naomi had taught her about God. And she didn't know what was going to happen when they got back to Judah. But God did, and she trusted in him. I think that God included the story of Ruth in the Bible so that we would know that there was such a thing as a kinsman redeemer. Now, besides having a little baby of her own, whose name was Obed, Obed grew up and he had a son named Jesse. And Jesse grew up and he had eight sons. The youngest son's name was David and he became the greatest king that Israel had ever had, King David. Wow. Ruth ended up having a king in her family line. Isn't that wonderful? Do you think that God loved Ruth? Yes, he did, and Ruth loved him in return. And she had faith. She had faith in God. Now we're going to look at our memory verse and see what it says about faith. Do you remember what faith is? Faith is a belief in something. And faith in God means we trust God. Now, I want you to do the motions with me. We tried it for the first time with the motions last week. So remember, we're gonna tear apart a piece of paper. Without faith, no one can please God. He rewards those who truly want to find him. And that comes from Hebrews chapter 11, verse six. Let's try it again, okay? Without faith, no one can please God. He rewards those who truly want to find him. Hebrews 11, verse 6. Maybe we can say it a little bit faster this time. Without faith, no one can please God. He rewards those who truly want to find him. 
Hebrews 11, verse 6. While God rewards us for our faith, well, Boaz was Ruth's redeemer. And the key word here is redeemer. Well, Boaz redeemed Ruth, but do we have a redeemer? Yes, Jesus Christ is our redeemer. Boaz was Ruth's redeemer because he was close family with Ruth. But Jesus is our redeemer. Why do you think we need a redeemer? Well, we need a redeemer because we have sinned. And God came to this earth to redeem us, to forgive us for sin. The payment of our sin is separation from God. We can't save ourselves. When Boaz became Ruth's redeemer, he bought back the property, married Ruth, and started a new family. What happens as the result of Jesus being our redeemer? Our sins are forgiven because Jesus forgave us on the cross. Well, let's look back at the last three weeks and see that Ruth made a lot of choices. The choices she made in the very beginning led her to Boaz. It was a big commitment to follow Naomi and trust God when she was going to a place she didn't know. In chapter two of Ruth, God rewarded Ruth's faithfulness by giving her favor with Boaz. She was allowed to safely gather grain in his fields for her and Naomi, but she still needed a redeemer to come and buy back the property and marry her and have children to carry on the family name. In chapter four, Boaz bought back the property and married Ruth. This Bible lesson points us to our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Now, doing good things won't get us forgiven. We need to have a right relationship with God, but doing good things will not help us to do that. Going to church and being from a Christian family won't save us. All of those things are good, but we can't save ourselves. God is the one that puts us in the right relationship with him. In Jesus, we have all been redeemed. It is only through what he did on the cross that saves us. He died for our sins and he rose again after three days. Now, I think that the fact that he came to earth as a little baby and died for our sins and rose again should make us very, very thankful. We respond with thankfulness that Jesus was the perfect son of God. In showing our thankfulness, we should want to live a life that honors him with worship and obedience. The second way you should feel is that you need to continue to look for Jesus every day in your life. You could pray to look for Jesus. You could read your Bible to look for Jesus. You can show others his love. Your next step is to show your thankfulness for your Redeemer through worship and obedience to Jesus. Let's say a little prayer, okay? Thank you, dear Lord, that you came down to this earth and died for our sins and became our Redeemer. We love you. Amen. Well, we're going to take a look at our craft today. Now, this is a picture of Ruth and Boaz. Who do you think this is? Why, this is Jesus, and this is Miss Teresa. When you get this page, this heart will be blank, and you need to draw a picture of yourself in there. Now it says at the top, draw a picture of yourself and draw a line to who redeemed who. Do you think that Jesus redeemed Miss Teresa? She's, he certainly did. And Boaz was Ruth's kinsman redeemer. So go ahead and draw a line to who you think your redeemer is. And Boaz was Ruth's redeemer. But I think that Jesus redeemed both Boaz and Ruth. So he's all of our redeemers. I hope you have a good week this week. I will see you next time. Goodbye.